Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the study this morning. Uh, we're going to continue our study on uh, Jephthah. But before we begin, can we have a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are very thankful for the time that we have each morning to open your word together and to have fellowship with you and with each other. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can be here to guide and direct us, to enlighten our minds, and um, that the work that is being done upon our hearts uh, will continue, that we can walk in this life that you are giving us. We ask, Lord, um, for your continued help as we draw these, uh, put these stories on a line. We're thankful for the light that has come over the past few weeks. We just ask for strength to walk in that light, that your will can be revealed for each one of us, and that we can have the strength to fulfill that will. Be with each person in their personal struggles, and be with us now. Through thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, um, well, there's a couple of little points that we need to uh, to address that we have just to kind of tie up some loose ends. Uh, we were addressing um, in dealing with this line. So uh, we'll just kind of frame it back in before we fill in those little bit, bits and pieces. So we know that this, um, there's the 18 years. So that 18 years brings us from September 11th, 2001 to September 11th, 2019. And in connection with that history, we also have um, September 7th. That's going to be when Elder Jeff wakes up. And that is the 153rd day uh, from April 8th, 2019, which I count as the first day of Jeff's uh, retirement. He does his last presentation, so Stephen had looked this up, um, his last presentation, which he had done, which is on the Future for America website, is, um, it's, it's done on April 7th, which is the Sunday, so it's Sunday morning, he does his last presentation, and then um, the next day, it's, it's posted on uh, the FFA website, and it's entitled, uh, 2019 and 2021. So the idea there is that that Stephen connects um, this idea of 2021 counting from November 9th, 2019, the date that we had already had, um, then counting the 777 days, which began in 1989 and ended in 1991. So that's from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 1991. And on December 25th, 1991, that's the fall of the Soviet Union. So it began with this, uh, the, the Berlin Wall uh, being open and then uh, and 777 days later with the fall of the Soviet Union. Now, uh, and there's a technicality there too, where it's on the 26th, the following day, that uh, um, uh, Gor what's his name, Gorbachev uh, resigns, Mikhail Gorbachev. Um, so he he technically designs resigns the next day later. So that would be 777 cardinal cardinal days. Uh, but to the fall of the Soviet Union in that year, it's 777 ordinal days. So we count to the 25th. Yeah, I, I think he resigns on the 25th. Um, and then the flag, the flag is lowered. Is that what? Officially, it's the, the 26th is, I think, officially the end of the Soviet Union. Okay. Maybe I got it backwards. Um, yeah, I mean, different people, 
things, but here, so you're going to have um, in their timeline. It goes a little longer than ours, but we we mark 1989. You could be right. Um, December 18th, December 21st. Okay, yeah, you're right. Gorbachev d resigns on the 25th. And then uh, on the night of the 25th of December at 7.32 p.m. Uh, Moscow time, after Gorbachev appeared on television, the Soviet flag was lowered and the state anthem of the Soviet Union was pay played for the last time and the Russian tricolor was raised in its place at 7.45 p.m symbolically marking the end of the Soviet Union. On December 26, the Soviet republics, the upper chamber of the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union, voted the Soviet Union out of existence. The lower chamber of the Soviet Union had been unable to work since December 12th. Okay. So, so it kind of happens a bit gradually. So, so I guess the 25th is the actual date both for the re resignation of Gorbachev and uh, the end of the Soviet Union. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Now, um, but it's that 777 days that you then start studying because of Jeff's study of 2019 and 2021. Did I get that part correct? Yeah, so it's not start presentation. Yeah. Now, now that presentation, we know it was five months that Jeff's in retirement, but if we go from that last presentation to his September 7th presentation, it's 153 days. Right. So we can do a cardinal count from that, or we can do an ordinal count from the first day of his retirement, April 8th, uh, 2019. Right? We, we'll get this all drawn out on a line for people. So <clears throat> now the interesting thing about the April 8th, 2019 date is that um, I had done some presentations on the week of Christ prior to um, Tess doing her presentations on November 9th. So I, I believe she was already doing her presentations, but she hadn't got to the date yet. She was covering other things. And this was a Friday night Vespers. Uh, I did two presentations. Uh, the first presentation wasn't uploaded right away. Um, I had to go to Bronwyn and get her to upload it after they had already uploaded the second one. Um, and these studies on the week of Christ in the first one, I had noted this April 8th, 2019 date as aligning with uh, the betrayal of Christ by Judas on the 12th day of the first month. And that lined up with, um, well, that was April 8th, 27 AD. And so I took that April 8th date and placed it in 2019. Uh, there was other ways I could have done it, but to me, that seemed the most significant. And it was also happened to be, that would be my sixth wedding anniversary for the marriage of Heidi and myself. And um, I had noted that, and, and that's probably one of the reasons why uh, Bronwyn did not um, upload it. She thought it was controversial, me mentioning uh, my wedding anniversary as somehow connected to prophecy, um, which I wasn't really particularly doing. I was just noting it um, as a personal thing. But yeah, so April 7th was the first day of the first month on the biblical calendar. Stephen is noting there. So in 2019, um, yeah, it's going to be the first day of the first month, April 7th. So that's when this presentation is done. Now, um, we also noted some other things regarding his presentations that, so this was Aran and I were discussing it earlier. Um, so Jeff does some presentations prior to 
um, the camp meeting starting there in the spring. And uh, he's going to do a presentation on March uh, 26th. Um, 2019 and that is the Tuesday um, but the, and that date happens to be on the mind calendar 666 and if you count 666 days from this date so March 26 2019 so there's going to be these three presentations at the end but if you count from March 26 666 days that's going to bring you to Biden's inauguration in 2021. Another way that can be done is we count from the beginning of March 27th. So that is the end of March 26th. And you count 666 days. And that brings you to the sale of the School of the Prophets. And the presentation that he does on March 27th is called The Closed Door. So if we, if we take a note from that, that we can count from this March 27th date, uh, where it talks about a closed door or the closed door. Um, we're going to have this. Um, so it's the closing of the doors of the Lambert Church that are also uh, are connected to this. Um, other date right so we have now how many days to so the lambert church that's going to be closed um that's going to be closed on september 11th right so somehow this whole thing goes together as a puzzle so we have the march 27th date in 2019 and then we're going to have the doors to lambert church closed on september 11th 2019 um, so 490 days from Lambert. So this is a question being asked me. Um, so again, we're reading these uh, chats here. So September 7th, 2019 was the sixth day of the sixth month. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to draw these out and, and you're going to help me here a little bit with the, the dates and the spans. So Iran asked about the 490 days. Um, so I'm just going to bring it up. Yeah. Let's see if I have it here. So there's 490 days from the closing of the doors at Lambert Church on September 11th, 2019, to uh, putting the School of Prophets up for sale on the 13th day of January in 2021. And then we know eight days later it's going to be sold, which is 187 days after July 18. Um, so let's do a few things here. So I'm going to erase all this here. So that... I got this all written out. So... Okay, so we're trying to address all of these here. So we know we got 9-11 over here and there's going to be these 18 years and that's going to bring um so this is based on a 360 day year is going to bring us to june 9th 
2019, which is one year after June 9th, 2018. I know, so just putting that in there. But it's this date, September 11th. Uh, let's see here, I'll probably give it a bit more space. Yeah, we're gonna have to, yeah, this isn't gonna work here. I'm not gonna put that in. It's just too much stuff to jam in. So we'll just do it this way. So we've got this line. So we've got these different dates. We're gonna have this March 27th, 2019. Okay, so this is gonna be a sermon called the Closed Door. And we, of course, have this symbol of the Levites. The day before, so March 26th, is 666 on the Mayan calendar, right? That's yes. technically 13, 6, 6, 6. So this is 6 times 360 plus uh, six times 20 plus six. That's how many days it is from December 21st, 2021. So now the next one that he's going to do on the 18th is going to be entitled uh, 1863, um, which is the last one he does before this camp meeting. And it's during this camp meeting. So this is, we're going to have the camp meeting. And the last day of that camp meeting is going to be April 7th, right? And then Jeff is going to do this uh, 2019 and 2021 sermon. Okay, that makes sense? So it's April 7th. So the first day of his retirement is technically April 8th, 2019. So we got these two different dates. <clears throat> Are you going to write retirement there? Okay. Uh, and then over here, we're going to have... Um, September 7th, uh, 2019. And that's going to be when Jeff wakes up. From his retirement, right? And this period of time, if we count from here to here, is 153 days. Right? So it's the five months because of those 31-day months in there, uh, it brings us to 153 days. Now, we also have then over here two dates. We have January 20th, 2021, and this is Joe Biden's inauguration, however you spell that. Yeah. Okay. And this is going to be um, 666 days from March 27th. That is from the end of this 666 Mayan calendar date. So the beginning of March 27th, the end of March 26th is 666 days. And we can also count, um, so maybe I'll do this a different way just, just to kind of make this, I'm gonna put the Joe Biden one down here. So I'm just gonna put JB's inauguration. Spell inauguration. So this is going to be January 20th. And I'm just going to count the 666 days here. Uh, 
And then we're going to count from this closed door sermon, this 666 days to January 21st, 2021. Then that's the sale of the School of the Prophets, right? And am I getting this correct? Yeah. And then we have, um, so we need in here this September 11th date. So this is 9-11-2019. And this is the closed door. Uh, the doors close uh, to Lambert. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we have over here um, on the 13th of January. So we go, we just go 1, 13, 21. That's the eight days in there. This is up for sale. Right? School yep. of the Prophets yep. up for sale. I don't know when the Lambert Church was sold, um, but the closing of the doors there is a symbol here. So we have this closed door. Um, and, you know, obviously we could put uh, November 9th in here somewhere as well. So how, how do we put this together? And there was the 490 days and the 490 days um, were from uh, Yeah, that's between uh, Lambert and uh, putting it up for sale, right? Yeah, so um, so that's the doors closing for Lambert and the putting it up for sale. So that's right here. That's 490 days right in here. Right? So does this connect then the closed doors of Lambert with the sale of the School of the Prophets? Is, is this sort of sufficient for people? Now, do we know when this camp meeting started? Did it start on a Monday or a Sunday? Or I thought most of them started on a Sunday. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to put eight days here just because um, we have eight days over there. And I'm pretty sure the camp meeting is, is eight days. If it went from Sunday to Sunday, that's eight days inclusive. Okay, any observations about this diagram? Okay, on this 490 years. Or days? Five, five, 490 days, yeah. Yeah. Do we compare that with the 490 years that transpired between Saul's anointing as king and the... Um, Jerusalem, or sorry, the, the children of Israel going into the initial captivity with um, Nebuchadnezzar in 607. Well, well, you can. Um, now, we also have, you know, three periods of 490 years, and they all illustrate something. Now, the 490 years that have to do with the temple, uh, those are the 490 years. So from the time Solomon's temple is built, to when it is destroyed is 420 years. And then it right. lies in ruins for 70 years and then is rebuilt as the second temple. Um, now this here seems to be uh, to some degree uh, addressing these buildings, the Lambert Church and the School of the Prophets, which would be more in line with the idea of the temple. Plus what about the eight days here and the eight days there? 
Does that also connect us to the sanctuary? Well, you'd have <clears throat> you'd have that with a potential connection to the sanctuary. Second Chronicles twenty nine: the two eight days for cleaning the holy place, and then the, the most most holy place, or the other way around. I was what what I was asking was more um, when Saul was anointed king. It was like the there was a glory to Israel, and then when the the um, children of David were taken captive four hundred ninety years later, it was like the glory had been removed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but September 11th, 2019 wouldn't really mark the start of that. But okay. um, so I would I would connect it more with with the temple itself. Okay. As symbol 490 it also addresses a close of probation. Right. 70 weeks. So in which which that's going to be. That's going to be 70 weeks. Well. Um, <laughs> what you were just bringing up there about the temple would mean that the um, the initial no, sorry, I got to think that through better. Yeah. So forget what I was saying. Okay. So so these two periods of six hundred and sixty six days. I mean, they're they're staggered a day apart, but they they tie this this Mayan date. 666 um, to this. And now there's also a question about exactly when the Mayan day begins and ends. So people give four different uh, times, either the morning, the sunrise, sunset, noon, or midnight. So nobody knows. Um, but the fact that this Mayan date is connected to March 27th, I already noticed. So when the 666 ends, the March 27th begins. And that's a symbol, of course, of the message to the Levites. Um, but that we have Biden's inauguration from that March 26th date being 666 days, I think is pretty significant. Um, because uh, we know this is a symbol for the Sunday law. And, you know, we've often... And, and the part of the controversy in the movement right now has to do with Trump or Biden. Now, I would say that Joe Biden's inaugura inauguration is part of a line that has to do with um, uh, Greece defeating uh, Media Persia, Media Persia being the United States. And Greece, of course, is the globalists. So the United States was conquered by the globalists. And we know that this is going to happen two weeks. Uh, prior to Biden's inauguration, January 6th, that we have the siege of Washington. Um, and so his inauguration is uh, a formalization of that in some way. So there's, I've never drawn that line out, but there is a line that we could deal with with Joe Biden and, and, and what that means as far as the globalists. But we mark that as the end of the United States. And... <clears throat> And yet, you know, we've we've often believed that Trump was going to bring in the Sunday law, but we know that the Sunday law comes about as a connection of three different powers, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. So the false prophet is the United States. Um, but, you know, the United States, the Republican horn falls. And when that occurs, um, we, we normally place that at the Sunday law. But we can see here that we are in the Sunday law and that this is progressive. So, so the globalist taking over the United States is something that's, that's unstoppable. That is, we're not going to have the United States restored back to a republic. And if you had Trump as president, it would be. But be that as it may, Trump's not going to become president again. And that's not part of this prophecy. That would actually be a rejection of the understanding of the prophecy regarding the last president of the United States. 
So it wouldn't make any sense, at least from my perspective. But here we have the, the symbol of the Sunday law now connected here to this history with Biden's inauguration. So this is a progression of the Sunday law. And we can see that our movement is tied up with that. Now, part of the things that happens with the Sunday law, because remember, Parminder's group said there's not going to be a Sunday law. But we can see that as this camp meeting with the torches being handed over or the cloak being handed over to Parminder, um, I had marked this April 8th, 2019, and it's gonna make this a little closer here so it doesn't look like April 18th. April 8th, 2019, as the, as I, as I noted before, it's the betrayal, Judas's betrayal. And, and we can see that that is the case. So when Jeff retires, this marks the beginning of Judas' betrayal, which is gonna happen as well a bit progressively. Um, and Bronwyn is going to be a part of that and betraying uh, Jeff to Parminder. She's going to repent of that and go back, but really never changes. So, I mean, there's lots of history we could put in here, but we can see that this is about uh, the cross, the Sunday law in the time of Christ. Um, there's a lot of lines that are, are brought together in this structure. So I don't know if there's any other observations people have. Anything else that people can see here? I see also there are Samuel Snow letters. You're seeing what? Samuel Snow letters. Okay. Symbol. Okay, the 153? Hmm. Yes. Okay, so we have this 153, the five months, which is the periods from uh, Samuel Snow's letter uh, first being written on February 16th, 1844, and the last published letter um, July 18th, 1844. So the 153 here in this connection would connect us to Samuel Snow's letters and also to the July 18th. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's a good observation. Now we know, of course, when the School of the Prophets sold, it's 187 days after July 18th. Now, and this also shows that what has been happening is e internal. This wasn't about an external event. Though the message of Nashville needed to be attached to July 18th because it is. That is, we weren't wrong in pointing out Nashville and all of the symbols that were associated with that. Um, we were just wrong about the timing of the event, that this was not marking the timing of the event. Um, it was marking, in a sense, uh, the warning to Nashville that needed to be made by this movement, which is part of a warning to the world and part of a warning to uh, Adventists. So we accomplished the task we were supposed to accomplish just as the Millerites accomplished the task they were to accomplish in warning people that the world was going to come to an end in 1843 and 1844, right? So you can't, you can't argue because the event didn't occur that it is then a false prophecy. If you marked, if you argued that, you would have to claim that about Adventism. And so you couldn't be a Seventh-day Adventist and accept this type of argument. It's a faulty argument. <clears throat> okay, so any other observations? That was a good observation regarding the 153. I think it's pretty clear that we can see all of these uh, connections. And, and noting that September 7th, 2019, 
was the sixth day of the sixth month on the biblical calendar. It ties us to the 666 number, to the symbols of the Sunday law. But we can now see that this Sunday law is being, it's, we're not, in, we're in the history of the Sunday law. We have been since 9-11, but the Sunday law is not yet what, you know, the day for it, because there is a progression of, that we're a part of. So, so that's addressing these 18 years. And then it's also addressing um, what we addressed was the elders of Gilead. We had addressed um, uh, quite a few things here. Um, so the elders of Gilead represent uh, this movement, FFA. But Gilead itself represents um, what message is the message of Gilead? Because Jephthah is a Gileadite, so it's a message <coughs> of July 18th. So what does Gilead represent? We said it represented Jeff's message prior to, right? So he, he's illegitimate in that he's... Uh, the son of a harlot, but he's legitimate in the sense that he is actually a son of Gilead, right? Correct. That's how we understand it. So, um, and that has to do with this message of July 18th, uh, that it, it is, was rejected and then accepted and accepted in a tentative way. So we had got to um, um, yeah, so where did we got to in our verses? Right, so there was this uh, argument that uh, the king of Ammon had, and Jephthah answers this by a reference to a correct reference to history. Right, and then we talked about the 300 years. And so the 300 years, there are two periods of them, one mentioned in the spirit of prophecy at the time that uh, the ark is in Shiloh. And so we look at this ark moving from Shiloh. Um, so we have some options. The one options is to take it when the, the cloak is being passed, though incorrectly, from Jeff to Parminder. So Jeff makes this error in trusting Parminder. Um, and Parminder then, uh, in a sense, he has the possession of the Ark for a time. So he represents the Philistines in this context. And any more thoughts about that? If we're going to take that 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 is the point. So we have a number of places where we could place it. Um, so, you know, we could place it at 9-11. There's different, different ways we could look at this. But if we look at it, the context of this message, can we place it at the point where Parminder, he doesn't have the buildings. He doesn't have FFA as such. He doesn't have the School of the Prophets as such. But they, they want to have that, right? That's what they're seeking to gain. And that's why we're looking at, you know, the sale of the School of the Prophets and the, and the closing of the doors of Lambert Church. Uh, those are connected. They're connected because these are things that Parminder's group wanted to control, uh, but they didn't in the end. So the 300 years here, right? So just to be clear, in 1126, this is a different 300-year period. Um, and, and this we would mark when the Israelites uh, are going to enter into the promised land. And so it's going to mark the 300 years in which Ammon and Moab could have uh, tried to take over that land which they try to claim is theirs, but it's not really their land. But they're claiming it's not the Israelites' land. 
but why didn't they do this before? So more thoughts on this? They were afraid of the power of God. Okay. So how would we apply this? You know, if we're going to take this 300 years, because I'm saying the 300 years for the ark is, is going to start when, but we could put it other places. I mean, we could put it to earlier periods. I mean, we could put it to, that, you know, because Parminder comes into the movement at different spots. Um, so when is technically the arc, the message possessed by Parminder's group? You know, that's that's the question for that one. But for these three hundred years, uh, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we put this back to something that's going to parallel um, that history? And wouldn't that be something like 9-11 itself? So we have the 18 years, which also present begins at 9-11. But could we take these 300 years and also place them at 9-11? Or would we take some other event? So I'm looking at the verses here. You're not looking at those. So um, now what were we saying about 2004 before? Wasn't yes. that just before uh, Elder Jeff had really begun to, to investigate the 2520? Yeah. So could we take the... <clears throat> 2004 um, understanding um, and somehow fit that in? Where would we fit? Yeah, so it's just before he begins to study the How did we do that yesterday? Why were we talking about 2004? We were actually talking about 2005 as being the year that, that Dwayne Dewey had called Elder Jeff to point out things that he had found regarding the 2520. Yeah, so this was in 2004 not in 2005. Jeff didn't present the 2520 till 2005. And I believe it was in January. So, um, so this was in 2004 when we did our study on that. But we, we also looked at the ARC being connected with Arkansas. So remember Stephen brought up Arkansas? So we looked at the ozone camp meetings in 2004. And we could then connect, um, we could connect this, right? So we, we said the arc is, when it's in Arkansas, that's where we saw the arc, Our, saw it in Arkansas. Just a little, little pun there in the name Arkansas. But does that make sense that we could take that the arcs in Arkansas, it's in Shiloh from 2004, that's Arkansas, and then Par ta Parminder takes it and moves the arc uh, to Phil Philistia.
So then we would take this period from 2001 to 2004, and that would be that first period of seven years before the arc moves to, because so, the arc's going to be in, in Gilgal, right? So we would take this as moving back. This 300 years is going to be just before they cross the Jordan, right? So they're staggered symbolically. They're literally, they're, they're staggered by seven years, but that's going to be a symbol of the 2520, which then is going to be um, first examined in 2004 by Jeff and then presented in 2005. Does that make sense? So these two periods of 300 years are literally seven years staggered apart, but in our history, it's going to mark from 9-11 to 2004, the, the beginning of that. And then at the end, we have Parminder with the Ark, so where would we mark the end of this 300 years? That's being talked about here. Are we just gonna have them both end together at the same time or is there some connection on how they end together? So my suggestion was the 777 structure marks the end of this, right? So we have the seven years, the arcs, the arc, people understand what I'm talking about because I'm not getting any feedback. So Stephen, how would you mark the end of that period of these two periods of seven years? So you've marked the beginning. How would you characterize the end of it? There's gonna be seven months that the arc is gone, right? Oh, Stephen disappeared. Okay. So we're going to have these 300 years, they end seven years apart. So the arc's 300 years in Shiloh. It's going to be captured. So if we're going to take at the end of these two periods of 300 years, Stephen, how would we, how would we connect that? Yeah, sorry, I just um, opened the phone just for a pass the wrong button. <laughs> so sort of turned it, turned it off, so I had to log on again. Um, yeah, I suppose you do see a seven-year period, so. But then, if you're going to connect it to the end of the 777, um, I, I've been more tending to look through the arc. Okay. Well, I suppose you're, you're, looking, you're looking for the art to be moved. Yeah, so uh, we, April, have the, we have the 2019. Seven, yeah, so, so we're going to have this, this connection, this period. So we got April, um, and then we're going to have uh, May, June, July, August, September, October. It's seven months to November, right? So we got seven months in there, and we have seven months that the Ark is in Philistia. Right. Okay. So I'm going to take the seven, seven months there, and I'm going to end, uh, because we're going to have uh, the Ark itself be moved. Now, of course, everything's a little bit different. It's not, you know, exactly lining up uh, the same, but I'm going to take that the 300 years that's mentioned here in Judges, um, so this is in Judges, um, where is it here? Yeah, Judges 1126, that I'm gonna start this at 9-11 um, at is where I would start this. And this is gonna end, um, in our history. So, I mean, that's exactly how that ends. I, I don't know what I would mark as the end of this, but what I will do is take the 300 years for the arc 
and count that from 2004. And, and that's going to begin in, so this is dealing with this battle that's, that's going on within that movement in this period of 777 days. So how we start this, I mean, they're not going to overlap the same way. You know, you're not going to have like seven months or seven years or four years at the beginning of the end. We're just going to, it's going to bring us to um, this 777 structure. And so when the arc is in Shiloh, that would be the period um, from 2004 to 2019. And that's when Parminder then is going to take that arc. And then it's going to be returned, but that's going to be, now the question about its return is, I think that it doesn't, it doesn't return until after the end of the 777 structure. Even though we have the seven months there, that's going to bring us to the beginning of the 777 structure, it doesn't really just end there. The seven, these periods of 777 days that were given to this movement was, is meant to be where that arc is then restored. Maybe it's the journey of the arc on the cart or something like that. And it's going to travel along and it's going to stay at somebody's house and it's going to move somewhere else. Um, right. So it's going to end up in Kirjath Jerem, I believe Stephen said. Yeah, could we not connect these here uh, 300 years to 30 years? So from 1989 to 2019, and then 1991 to 2021. Okay. And then well, you have within that period 777 days, which are typified by the seven years. Okay, I like that. So, so what you have then is the 777 days at the beginning, right? From 1981 to 1990, 1989 to 1991, right? So we have these two periods of 777. Now, um, so that's going to, to tie the beginning and the end together. So, so in a sense, we're going to take the end of because this, this, you're saying that this 30 years is being tied to um, this battle, you know, 1989 to 1991, is going to be tied more symbolically to what happens before they cross the Jordan. Uh, yes. It's going to start there, and it's going to end in that period of seven years. And then, the, and so the arc is going to be, so we're tying together these two things. We're tying together these two, 300 years, but we're connecting them with the 777 days at the beginning at the end with the seven years at the beginning and the end. Symbolically. People see logic in that. Because it does make sense to have 300 years being represented by 30 years. So then when we get to the 777 days in our time, um, we're, we're going to take the seven months um, and we're going to place it where? Are we going to place it from um, April 8th to November 11th, 2019? We're going to take that seven months that the Ark is possessed by the Philistines. So that's going to be Parminder's period from when he, he gets the Ark to when he loses the ark. Does that seem reasonable? So that's going to start the period of 777 days for us.
Well, that, the, the later 300 years applies from the, the 30 years that end in December 25th. Yeah. I, so you would, have, you would have seven months really going from there, logically. I understand, except that we're not, we're not making the end identical with the beginning and how it's, it's, it's more almost like a mirror. Does that make sense? Right, okay. So I'm taking it more like a mirror. So the seven months precedes this 777 days rather than following after it. But that's an important point that we need to distinguish here. And, and we're not using these necessarily all as literal time. Uh, we're using them as a symbol. So what happens in this story, uh, you know, we're not going to take the seven years and and put them in any literal sense. We do have the seven months, though, as a symbol that we definitely already fits in um, from April, April 8th to November 11th. You know, there, there's actually quite a bit in there that we could look at, too, but um, I don't want to right now. Um, <clears throat> so then this 777 days that we had from November 11th to December 25th, 2021, um, this has to do with the restoration of this message. Does, does that fit in for people? Having the message restored, so to speak, at the end of that period. That is, the ark is returned to Israel. Doesn't mean it's put into, into Jerusalem yet. Same to line up. Okay. So that 777 days marks the end of that seven months. But the 777 days just becomes a symbol of that ark being returned, right? Because it's at the beginning of, of this other period, the, the two periods of 300 years. So now we have two periods of 30 years that we're marking in our history, but we're not putting the seven months after the end because the ark's gonna follow later, right? But we're gonna put it at the beginning of the 777 days, that seven months. And so it becomes like a mirror to this other story. I mean, to me, it fits, but I'm the one who's, who's you know, talking. So and any thoughts on that? So some good points have been brought up. So have we, have we tied up enough loose ends that we can move on to Jephthah's tra tragic vow? people satisfied i mean we will draw this all out uh, but at I, this point it seems it seems so okay so now we have jeff's tragic vow and and we will come back to this because we're going to draw it on a line later uh, unless people want me to draw this all on the line now I think drawing it on a line now would help in the overall understanding. Okay, so we'll do this then. So before we get to Jephthah's tragic vow. Okay, just hang on. Okay, there we go.
Okay, I'm gonna erase this, but I have it on camera, so we have a screenshot because I gotta draw this all out again. I probably should just do it again from memory, but sometimes there's little details I miss. <clears throat> now, what we're doing is we're taking this 777 days here. So this is, um, I'll do it this way. And right, so we got that at the end, and at the beginning, we have so did I do that right, or did it backwards? Right, it should be ninety one. Or at um, 122591. Oh, right. And and then how about how I'm writing these dates? So this is, yeah, November 9th, right? Okay, I got that right. So November 9th, 89 to December 25th, 91. So you got 777 days here. Now, we're taking this as a symbol of seven years, right? which equals the 2520. Now we have before this, there's a history of here of seven months. And this is gonna go from April 8th, 2019. Maybe I should be consistent. Like that. Okay, so April 8th, 2019. So you have these seven months. And this is the arc. So the arc is going to be here in Arkansas. So over here, I guess I'm, I'm going to put 9-11, just, just as a reference. And there's this period of time from 9-11, and we'll just call it four years. But this, this is going to be 2004. And here are the arc, so this is going to be ozone. And so this is Arkansas. Right? So this is going to be um, Shiloh. Right. Okay. And then the Philistines. They're going to have this arc for the seven months. So probably I should have put seven months up here. Yeah, let's fill this thing this here. Okay. Now, so so we're not taking so this this th three hundred years, right? Which is thirty years. We're, we're not lining them up exactly the same. They're not staggered in our history exactly the same. Right, so this seven years here, this is going to start um, this period that is going to be marked between them. But we're not going to start in 1991 with the arc, right? We're going to move this over to here, right? So this 300 years... We'll just go like this. This is 300 years. Um, but it's more like, like this. So this is the same period of 300 years. So maybe the best way to do this would just take it like this.
And this is going to not be the arc itself. This is just going to be uh, Judges 11, verse 26. So it's just taking these symbols here. Um, here, and you know, we could maybe, we're just taking this all together. Even though the arc is going to be in theirs, it's going to be seven years later. We're just taking that seven years as a symbol, but we're not really counting that the arc is in Shiloh here, right? Does that make sense to people? Is that fair enough? Because the 300 years mentioned in the spirit of prophecy is something that we can then add as a symbol here, but it's not mentioned in scripture. Scripture doesn't say the ark was in Shiloh for 300 years. Right. Uh, says that. Okay. So they just give us this period of 300 years. Okay. And. But now we're going to take this other 300 years and we're going to put it in this history. So, so this here is now 300 years. Right. But with this second period of 777. Yeah. In keeping with, with what, we, what we were just addressing, we're, we're aware that there's the seven months with the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And the second period of 777, the ark is brought into the house of Abinadab, the father of generosity. Yeah, so... Uh... I should write it with the capital. Yeah, so the father of generosity. But he sanctifies his son to keep the ark. Okay. And the son's name is Eleazar. So we're dealing, since that's Eleazar, we know Lazarus. Exactly. Okay. And what would that symbol mean then? Well, as Eliezer, or excuse me, as Lazarus led the ass into Jerusalem, we have Eliezer here that is responsible now for the ark itself. Okay. So I'm trying, I'm trying to look at what the what the symbol could be. Because the name is important on both points. So the ark abode in Kirjath Jerem for 20 years. How, do, uh, how would we approach that 20 years? Well, this is something that we, you know, I have not worked out. Stephen is, has sort of created uh, a structure there that, um, that I'm not certain about because I'm not certain about Samuel, et cetera. So there must be something there that we have to figure out. But uh, Okay, but we, we are aware that at the time, as you're pointing out here right now, with the seven months of the Philistines. Yeah. That's after the death of Eli. Right? Yeah, Eli is going to die. Um, so that's Ichabod, right? Ichabod is born and Eli dies, yes. So, yeah. so the glory is departed. Yeah. Eli is dead. So that means that the old priest is now dead. Yeah. And you have this seven months with the, with the Philistines having the control of the ark. Now, 
with without being sort of disrespectful here right towards jeff but we do see a characteristic that eli had that jeff had okay so what is the characteristic Reliance on prior study. Um, okay, but what, what is it about Eli? What, what ends up happening? He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't chastise his sons. Okay, he doesn't chastise his sons. Right, okay, I got it. Right, so you see that this is part of the problem that ends up happening here. And we, we would agree with that. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of chastisement that went on with certain parties. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, and that's not meant to be disrespectful to Jeff or anything. It, it's it's just a reality of what what happened, and it led to this to some degree. So, so, so in other words, here we are at at this point with the death of Eli, the birth of Ichabod, the glory is departed. We have the seven months with the Philistines. The ark is then returned. But there becomes a 20-year period after the ark is returned before Samuel begins to judge Israel. Right. So we have this 20 years. Whatever that, however we're going to try to apply that. Um I would I would have to ask is if your 20 if the 20 years could also be applied with the two years that you've got there from 11 9 of 19 to 12 25 of 21 okay um, those seven 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 days being 20 years well I'm looking, I'm just looking at the, at the two years going from 11 of 19 to December of 21. So two years becoming 20 years. Okay. Uh, 20 years becoming two years, I guess. Right. Three years becoming 30. Right. Um, okay. So that, that seems reasonable. Um, now, now Samuel, he, I mean, who Samuel re represents or what message it represents now, because if we're going to deal with this line, I mean, this is something that goes outside of our study at this point, right? Because that's going to not be in the book of Judges. That's going to be the book of Samuel. But at this point, we have to have an idea on this portion yeah. so that as we complete this with mm -hmm. Judges, yeah, we are then able to look at this as to how it interrelates with what we're dealing with right now. Right. Yeah. Because what is the meaning of the name of Samuel? Um, God's servant. Yeah. Heard of God. Yeah. yeah. So I was, yeah, heard of God. I, I know it had to do with hearing. I can remember if it's God heard, but it's heard of God. You're saying no. that, that our situation right now is a lot of light has been coming from these studies. Where is that light coming from? Oh, from God. So are we not hearing from God yeah. in these studies? Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So at this point with what with what we're pointing out is going to be occurring with this situation of the judges we would be receiving light from god we just need to listen so that the applications that we are making are going to be in line with that which we are hearing would that be logical? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think there's just more to it at the end because I would also try to include, I mean, we could take these 20 years as representing these two main studies that we've done, understanding the lines, which which occurred in the period of these 777. Right. And, or not, that's the laying of the foundation part or the understanding the foundation, examining the foundation. And now the understanding the lines that happens after that 777 days ends. Right. So now, it, it, it's so. entirely possible that this from 11 of 19 could be extended out further as part of the 20 years. I'm just, I'm giving an yeah. Okay. I, what I see is a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just think that there's, there are other things that, you know, once we get into the story of Samuel, that we will see applied to this movement as well at the end of this period. Right. So, so this to me is a, an extremely important structure. Right. I mean, <laughs> just like the, the ones we've had over the last, uh, like yesterday. And of course, uh, the day, the the week before, and and week before that, because so we're we're sorting out this story of the, the judges, and we keep seeing these lining up with our history, um, and and covering that period from two thousand one to uh, twenty twenty three. That's primarily what judges is about for us. Right. Now, of course, this one goes back to the beginning, but remember, he's going back to the beginning before the period of the judges. With this 300 years. Right. That's why we have this here. And it's just establishing the connection between the past, the beginning of this movement, and where we are at the present day. Um, so this fits extremely well with what we've already understood. And in each of these illustrations, we have different histories, biblical histories that are presented to us. Um, and these readily demonstrate um, our history and fit into our lines perfectly. Right. Yeah. Now, now, and, and this becomes like a mirror, right? So we know that when we take this history, uh, you know, there are some things that are different. Um, because of the fact that it's a mirror, but this fits in with what we have. So it, it ties this end in the beginning, this 300 years is 30 years and, and ties us to that seven, those seven, seven, sevens being tied together. And so this was given as something to, to test God's people. Now, there was something else, too, about this um, when the Ark is taken from the Philistines. Where does it go first? Just, just a second. Uh, I always forget. Okay. They brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Yeah. So hey, I'm looking at this. Okay. So the, all right, the word, word of Samuel came to all Israel. Israel went out against the Philistines and pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Aphek. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to study this history a little bit more to understand the end of it. Right. So. But I, I do think that this, um, and, and because, you know, when we deal with Jephthah's vow, how we come to understand it, because remember, I had struggles with it of where to put it. Um, uh, we see that it's related to the July 18 prediction. Right. But I think we might see some more details than we saw last time we looked at it. Okay, so answering your question, mm -hmm. the Philistines captured the ark directly from where the children of Israel had camped in Ebenezer. They took the ark from there to Ashdod. Yeah. And they're going to have bad things happen with their gods and stuff. 
Right. They they took it into Ashdod to the house of Dagon. Okay. Now, when they put it on a cart, I mean, that's the one thing I'm kind of interested in on how we would understand that. Okay. So, so we know, yeah, that there's going to be, um, you know, so without, you know, one of the things we know is there is this cart that's going to carry the ark. Right. So it yeah. went from Ashdod to Ekron. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they they constructed a new cart and they hitched it to two cows that had never been yoked. Yeah. And, and so these were ones that were still had the nursing uh, cats. Correct. So they're going to uh, bleat and, you know, and call their mothers, but their mothers are still going to walk away from them. Right. And then it's going to end up where? Because it goes to, because I remember it goes to somebody's house and then it gets moved. Well, it went, it went from, it looks like going from Ekron to Beth Shemesh. Right, the house of the sun. Correct. Right, so that's after it is on the cart. Correct. So we're going to get. Uh... And they of Beth Shemesh were reaping the wheat harvest at the time that this occurred. Okay. <clears throat> And the cart came into the field of Joshua, a Beth Shemite. Yeah. So, so Joshua, he's a Beth Shemite. So, it's interesting that this occurred to the house of the sun. Yeah. So, we're going to pick this up tomorrow. Right, that's basically where we left off, and hopefully get a chance to look at it uh, before we come to finish this. But you can see um, there's there's a lot there at the end that has to do with this movement in this period of time. Right. Okay. Okay, so I think that's where we're gonna have to stop there. I can't think of what else other than you know when we deal with this um you know once we get through once we because I, I, I think we do need to to deal address uh the arc in that period of time so we're gonna have to go a bit more in detail with that um and then i think we can look at jephthah's, tra jephthah's tragic vow and understand how that fits into this line as well any final thoughts or observations before we close with prayer? Not at the moment. Okay. You got you got Eklon. Is it is that uh, Eglon too? Ekron. No. Ekron. Ekron. Ashdod. Ashdod and Ekron. 
Ekron, okay. Yeah. I just have a badly drawn K. Okay. So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful once again for the light that is shining upon our path. And um, we just ask, Lord, that we can be diligent in our personal study, in our daily devotions and obedience to your word. And we just pray that you can help us today. Be with each person. May your angels watch over us. And bring us together again according to thy will, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.